this is what uh, this is what we're aiming for. Now, what I've done is I've used this uh, die to cut out uh, this. Now, once I've done it, I kind of felt like I could have need done with more. So I'm going to use two pieces, but what I'm cutting it out from, just bear with me, I'm going to be bringing boxes in and out for the moment, um, is uh, foam. It's not your flower forming foam. You can use that if you're willing to sacrifice some of your lovely flower forming foam. It's kind of more your funky foam. It's just because I wanted something a little bit more flexible, um, a little bit more, um, a little bit thicker. Now I am going to run this through the machine, but what I'm not going to do is sit here and and get it all out. It cuts really well, as I'll show you. But if you thought you have static when you cut it with card, that's nothing compared to what you get when you cut it on the foam. So let's do that first, and then I'll um, I'll uh, explain what I've do I've done with the rest of the canvas. And hopefully we will get through that. Uh, I'm not even going to um, to tape it. So I'm going to run this through. And like I said, it cuts fine. But because it's foam, it, it kind of clings to the, the die. And oh my word, is it a mess. Uh, I have had to sit over the top of my... Um, let's bring it out. It is all cut, but it kind of clings in there. And as soon as you start to pop this out, it just goes everywhere. So my suggestion to you is when you cut it, go over a bin and wiggle it. And it all pops out and it all drops into the bin, but it does go everywhere. I kind of feel like they, they do just come out. Can you see what I mean? They, 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 it's not like it hasn't cut. It's just so messy that I am not going to do it live there's some things see that already is sticking to me <laughs> and it would only get worse if i tried to pop all that out so i have already got myself two pieces i'm going to put them to one side because what i want to do is to start prepping the um the canvas so some of that is dry before we move on so this this is not <laughs> Um, a canvas that I have been at. Ooh, okay, that was a good start. That's one of my pots smashed on. No, it's, it's not smashed. It's fine. Just dropped on the floor. Um, the these two canvases, the one I've got there and the one that I'm working on, are really old. If you look on the back, you see these marks here. <laughs> I bought it years ago, and it had these these patterns that go all the way over and you can just about make it out it was almost a, a color by numbers but not quite it was like there's, there's the patterns you you choose your colors and I did it for a room and they were on the wall for a long time and then they were up in the loft for a long time so what I've done I have literally gessoed over the top so uh, it took quite a bit of gesso to get over them but I'm not too worried that it's not completely covered because it'll all pretty much disappear so that's the first job is to make sure you've got a nice white background now, the next thing is I wanted to create some texture here for the waves. And so I have used just tissue paper, tissue paper and decoupage glue. Okay, let's get that opened. And this is where, this is where it starts to get messy and it will only get worse until the end of the show. So um, I'm going to go this way because there's a slightly lighter bit here where I've got the, the beachy area. So I am going to start by painting the side, the two sides, this side, so top and right side of the canvas with the decoupage glue. And also kind of on the top, roughly where you want it to be now as soon as you start putting the decoupage uh, the tissue paper on it will it will start to get a little bit sticky so open out your piece of uh 
tissue paper and what you want to do is you stick one of the edges down and then the other edge. Now I've ripped it, it doesn't matter because I'm going to stop wrinkling it anyway. So you've got your star and then what you do is you just bring it over and with your glue you just start to stick it however you want, fold it up, fold it over. Now the tissue paper will absorb the glue, it will become quite malleable and it, this is one of those things, it's how mucky, how messy do you want to get, uh, it's entirely up to you but it's one of those things, it's a cheap and easy way to create texture, so you don't need um, any fancy pastes, you don't need uh, I need stencils or moulds and literally just with a bit of glue and a bit of, um, I'm going to come back up here, a bit of uh, tissue paper you can create the texture for our waves. Okay. Now I'm not too worried if it will dry fairly quickly, but I'm not too worried if it doesn't completely dry by the time we're ready to do our next bit. Okay, so any bits that I'm not sticking down to the sides, I will cut off later once everything is dry and I can see what's stuck and what hasn't. What that said, it looks like it's ripping off anyway, so let's just rip, just rip that off. It's a good rip. Totally covered in glue and totally messy. There we go. Right, so that's for our um our waves. Not too worried again about this bit because we're gonna put our shells over there. Okay, so there's my kind of wavy bit and I'm going to put my brush into some water and I'm going to close off that. Now, for, um, I'm just going to pull that off otherwise it's going to annoy me. Um, for the sandy bit and looking at, looking at what I've done on this one, I I probably when I paint I will bring the blue paint down to here but that's it's not a problem. Um I am going to use some texture paste now because I if I want it to look like um sand this icy snow paste is is quite gritty. So it literally is a case of just put it on and it doesn't matter if it goes over the um the tissue paper, it doesn't need to be thick, it doesn't need to be even. You can hear, you can hear the grit in it. It's to add that kind of sandy, gritty texture. I'm going to put some along the side as well and just literally putting it along there. And a little bit along here. Doesn't need to be completely floated, just kind of to bring that texture down there. Now, I am going to give it a little blast on the uh, with the heat gun, but not a huge blast. It doesn't take really too long to dry. I just want to make sure, sorry, I'm getting the um, lid back on that so that I am not um, letting too much air in. So we'll give it a quick blast. So you don't want to, you don't want to heat it too much because obviously that's very thin paper. 
And once it starts to heat, it's going to start to, to move and do stuff you don't want. Same with the, the texture paste. You don't want to overheat it. But we'll give it a fair blast now and then we can prep a few other bits while we're waiting. Put uh, some down the sides. Okay, we'll go with that for now. And chances are, my um, I was about to say blowtorch is not a blowtorch. Keep going. Probably won't switch on again for a while anyway. So I'm going to put this now just to one side to allow it to, to dry out a little bit more. There for the moment. Uh, let's just bring it back in so we can look what we're going to do next. Now, uh, this is what I have used here. And I felt I didn't have enough, which is why I've gone for two pieces this time. Um, and I like it because with this, you can stretch the edges. It's not the same as if you were using um, cutting it from a piece of card, which is why I went for the foam. But I do need to colour it, and I do obviously need to mix my paints for uh, painting the background as well. So I'm going to do that um, in a little pot, just for ease of um, trying to keep it clean. But these are. <laughs> Chocolate mousse, I rather like. But I have got some white gesso here. I'm not sure this is enough, but I have got another pot somewhere. Yeah, whatever it is, in case I need it. Right, so I'm going to need some white gesso. Now I'm using quite a lot because the colours, these are the colours I have in uh, the Royal Langnickel acrylics. I've got I've got my primary colours, a, a red, a yellow, and a bright blue. So cadmium yellow, cadmium red, um, dark ultramarine, and then I've got a brown, the raw umber, just to sort of to to neutralise things if you like. But I don't want dark colours. So all the colours you can see on here, I have made with with these. But you do need um, a fair amount of gesso. Excuse me. I said I'm not sure if I've got enough left, but I haven't. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's quite rude. But I'm gonna get the pot out because I feel it's rather not great. Um well, let's mix it and see. It might be that I don't need I don't need loads more. So I'm going to make the blue. Let's use one of the ones I've got more in because I need more. I'm the other the other thing I did when I'm when I um when I mixed these and I did them uh I mixed them with my my stencil brushes which is what I'm gonna use but then what happens when you these are great stencil brushes but what happens when you mix the paints with them is so much of the paint gets caught up in the brush um and then kind of lose some of that paint you don't you don't get it back well you can um but you know it gets kind of caught up in the thing so i thought if mixing it in here we might get a little a bit more um sort of out of our paint so i've only got a little bit of blue these are strong colors and um quite honestly you just need a little bit can you see Already, I've got a nice light blue. However, um, I I was aiming for this. This is a picture of my dog. This is Molly um, on the beach with a ball, um, and I was kind of aiming for this. It's more grey blue, um, so uh, it's, and it's slightly more green. So I I added a really, really, really tiny bit of yellow. Now I. I have broken the cap off my yellow, but what happens is this then clogs up. 
it's fine. You just have to take that off to get the colour out, which is, is no biggie. Whoa! Remember what I said about a really, really tiny bit of yellow, which is going to make this into a more green. I'm sorry, I'm doing it in the pot. It's not quite so easy for you to see. Right, so that's, that's more of the blue now that I want rather than just the straight blue. So that one's okay. Let's put that one there. Right, next I want um, the... I'm going to go with that one. It's got more in. Um, this, this sort of sandy colour, okay? So this one is a combination of a little bit of yellow and a little bit of brown. Give it that more sort of sandy colour than that bright sort of lemony yellow. So give that a mix. So that's for my sand. Okay. And then I need um the last one I need to mix up is the colour for the netting. So this one is a mixture. They're all mixtures. It's a, you know, with when you've got your primary colours, you can mix pretty much anything. But there and with if you've got white and then black or in this case really dark brown, you can sort of really um change the tones of things. So we've got a little bit of brown for this one, a bit more brown for that one. And because that's quite a grey brown when you mix it up, I'll put a little bit of red. You see how much I'm using tiny, tiny little bits um, to kind of warm that up. So it might be that I put too much red. You see how much a tiny bit I use and I might want some more brown in that. Definitely going to need some more brown. I've ended up with more of a pinky colour. So put some more brown in. It is a good idea to mix your colours before you start and mix enough. Because if you don't, you'll find you'll get part of the way through your project and you won't have enough. Um, paint and I still think I need more brown in that. You know what will happen now is I'll put loads in and that'll be too much. Oh there we go that's looking more like what I want. Yeah maybe a bit of yellow. I'm winging it now. Oh take the lid off with this one. And all of this this is why kind of sometimes it's like, kind of like I don't know if you ever heard of it critical path analysis. I used to do computing many, many, many years ago. Critical path analysis, trying to work out what you can do while other things are doing. So these are all things you can be doing while the canvas is drying. Um, that's better. We'll go with that. Whether it's right or not, we're going to go with it. Because, uh, I don't know, watching me mix paint is probably as boring as watching paint dry. So we'll do that. Ah, ah, ah. Lid, go on, please. Right, so let's put that in there. Let's put the paints down and let's have a. First of all, we are going to do the netting. Um, now, this is this is a bit of an experiment for me because you know I always mop up my um, uh, my ink, my watercolor, and that I always mop that up with. Um, rice paper and I thought I had because I did it on my craft sheet when I did that one I had loads on there so I have um I'm experimenting now with how using acrylics and how how you know this is going to work so I am I want to, to pounce this on and so rather than this being wasted I mean you could in effect stencil you could stencil it onto um piece of card, a piece of watercolour card. You see what I mean by look, all that paint and um, the brush just eats it, just seems to eat it up. Um, 
And that's another thing. When I was clearing up, I cleaned my brushes on the rice paper. But even when I put them under water, it's like, oh, there's so much more um, paint I could have got out of them. I'm just going to put that there. You see already I've got paint. All that paint otherwise would have been just wasted. So I'm literally just pouncing that on with um with a stencil brush. Okay. It is a lot paler than the one I've got on there, but you know, never mind. It's still a really lovely natural sort of um, beige colour. I'm just going to put that on there as well. So, and then I am just going to clean my brush, get rid of some of this excess onto the paper. It just seems such a waste. There still would be, if I was at home now, I would be kind of putting this in water and then doing more of it, but we don't have time. So that's just going to go in my water to stop it drying out. I'm going to put that there for the moment. Okie dokie. So we finished with that one. Those are drying. Let's grab our um, thing. It's still quite wet, but that's okay. We'll give it another blast with a heat gun. And then doing more of it. And we don't have time. I can see some way. areas with a lot of glue, so I'm just going to go in and kind of um, okie dokie. So I move that, that with my. Uh, those are drying. To be quite honest with you, it doesn't matter if it's wet, too wet. Um, you don't want it completely wet, wet because so you don't want it okay. all moving. But if some of it moves as you put the paint on, it all adds to the texture. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get too precious over it all. Kind of. And. Uh, Dry. And also, while I've got the heat gun on, I'm going to give those um, foam nets. Sorry, I just can't grab hold of it. Uh, a little bit of a, a blast as well. Just be careful when heating foam because obviously it's um, it's not going to react in the same way as paper. On. But at least this I'm will give take the the real wet edge. Off of um, this when you stuck. Ah, that was my hands. Another reason. Uh, a little bit of a like glass that, as well. Needs must. Just be careful when heating foam because obviously it starts to bubble. Um, That's what was just starting to there to do there. The it's starting to bubble. This will take the the real wet edge. Right, Fold that down. Right, okie dokie. So those to one side again. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add in our colour onto um, the canvas. So another stencil brush this time with the blue and literally everything, looking at it, everything is going to be paler today and that's fine. Paler blue, paler um, netting, probably paler sand as well but that's okay. So You can see it isn't it isn't dry. The paper is still moving, but I am not too worried about that. It will take a bit of time to dry out completely with all the layers on. So we just go with it. And I I'm glad I did it in the pots because it it does mean this paint is uh, going further rather than having most of it already in the brush before I even started. Okay, so I'm going to come down a bit here with the blue, even though I didn't do my um, uh, tissue paper all the way down, it, that doesn't matter, I can still add the paint. And then I am just going to put the blue down the side as well, just grab the paint over here, I'm just going to add this over the top. I think I'm giving Dan a bit of a nightmare, Dean, who's Dan? Hi Dan, hi Dean. Bit of a nightmare because I keep moving things up and down often with the overhead camera. But yeah, so I'm just um because this is quite a deep 
box canvas. You don't need to do it on a on a box canvas. This just happened to be what I had kicking around in the um, loft that was sort of screaming out for a, a revamp. Okay, so I'm not going to get rid of that just yet, just in case I want to go over more. This is just like danger waiting to happen, me doing this. But hey ho, we'll go with it. Right, and then, um, so I've got my yellow, and like I said, this is definitely all a lot more pastel than the one I did before, but equally as good. So we're just doing the same with this yellow as I did with blue and bringing the two in, overlap them so you haven't got, you know, a really hard edge between them. It does take longer to apply with a stencil brush, but it does, when you're trying to do textural things, it will get more into the bits and bobs of texture that you have. And it also will add texture in its own right because you're sort of pouncing it on and not just smoothing it on. You certainly wouldn't, with it still, with all the underlayers still being wet, you certainly wouldn't, wouldn't want to be just brushing over because you'd be you'd be brushing everything off at the same time okay so there we go so there's our sides done again i'm just going to keep hold of that just in case now, I know what I did do. I'm just going to grab my brown again. I did go over the, the sand with a little bit of just brown on its own. So I'm going to do that. There. And then just to add a little bit more difference of colour. into the sand, those darker bits that you get. And it's a little bit, I have to say, because I didn't, because I didn't, I'm going to put it on the mat and I'll show you. Because I hadn't worked it into my brush, that's why I'm getting like little like birds fit. Can you see now, because I've worked it onto my brush, I'm getting much more of a, a better coverage, not so just sort of like individual little specks. So. And with um, acrylics on your craft sheet, you can just leave those to dry. If you, if, you know, a bit like that, you're not really going to mop up too well. Um, but if you leave it to dry, it will just um, scrape off. I am, however, going to um, attempt to uh, wipe it up. Otherwise, I'm going to put my elbow in it. little bit of water and that will come away. Okay. Right, so we've got um, our kind of base layer on. Now, um, next thing to add is this, but also the picture. So I have, let's just move that up a little bit. I have um, my picture and I have this is just literally from a corrugated cardboard box and I've done nothing to it. I've not added paint or anything to it. Um, I kind of just thought it kind of had a, a, a slightly um, driftwood uh, kind of feel to it. So I'm just literally hacking into it with my scissors to give myself a rough. I'm not bothering whether it's straight or whatever. In fact, I don't really want it straight. So I'm going to go in and... Uh, and then let me get rid of those extra pieces and then I just literally ripped into it just to it at various places just to reveal the corrugated bits and ripped into the bottom 
just doesn't matter what you do, just to make it look more like it's something you would find on a beach, all raggedy and that's the nice thing about corrugated card like this off the, off the delivery boxes you get. And if you're anything like my hat, I forget a lot of those. Um, they are great for um, mixed media projects because they just give so much texture. In fact, that's even better than the last one. So I'm going to just stick this on to there. Again, I'm getting as many. I'm Feel like I'm off camera and I do apologize it's because I've got so much stuff on my desk that I am running out of space so we're just gonna stick that on and then um I am the next thing I'm going to do right I am going to bear with me before I had some major accident where the entire face became <laughs> Comes a mass of muck. I'm just going to tidy up. Okay, not too far off uh, now, so it's just kind of assembling the last bits. I'm going to kind of just cut again. I don't want those edges, so I'm just cutting those away. Um, so that they are it looks much more natural and this time because I've got more I'm just gonna pull into it and I'm just gonna it doesn't matter how you do this it's it's entirely up to you overlapping this is why last time I was like oh I really could do with some more um but there I was like oh I really yeah. could do with some there. And then I'm going to go for a bit down here, I think. Like that. Okay, so that's ready for up there. This is ready for down here. The other thing I need for down here is uh, some twine, which I have here. And literally, I literally, again, it's just gardener's twine, it's nah. Think special. I'm going to just literally hack that off, and then <laughs> all I did was that. Like, chuck it on. Okay. Now, the way to adhere this is there are many different ways. You can use mixed media glue, um, sort of heavy body gels, things that have got a substance. You can use pastes. Um, you could colour your pastes with your paints um, if you've only got white. I uh, I have a transparent one, which I'm going to use. Uh, oh, no, I'm not. That's decoupage glue. That won't work. That's way too runny. As you can see, it's all just run out the pot. Bear with me. Trying to think to work my hands with. Okay. Lid on that one. It's the white and the silver lid I'm looking for. One we use just now. Oh, come on. Right, this is the one I want. Okay, so this is it's uh it's kind of like a glue, uh it's a paste, it's a gel, um, but it dries completely um transparent. So if I just show you here, you can see um I've brought it all onto here just to tie in. But I'm using it as a glue for all my bits and pieces. So I'm going to grab um, a palette knife, and this is still wet, so we're just going to go with it. Um, so I literally, I'm just going to do this. This is going to be underneath the um, the picture. So I'm literally just going to do this to glue this down. I don't need to glue it down all over. I'm going to just have a check. I might want to re. Now, this is bigger than the one I did before, so I don't get so much of it there. I think that, that will do like that. Um, and then uh, we will stick this down as well. So I'm going to put some of this here. Don't need it all over. I'm going to stick that kind of there. 
I need to come in a little bit for the shells. And then I'm going to do a similar thing up here. I'm, I'm just going to put some down. And the reason I'm not worrying too much, because um, this will dry clear. I don't want it all over everywhere. Um, so I'm just putting little bits down that are going to be enough to, to stick it. Um, I've got other bits that are going to be going down over the top so I can always add some more like I say if I'm just going to add little bits all over really because it kind of ties everything in it makes it all look like it's wet but like I say if you've got um, white stretch paste you could do it with white to make it look like the foam from the, the water um, or you could color your stretch paste so that what you put on up here um, is blue. Uh, it's entirely up to you. So I, I'm going to cut those bits off. So don't, don't worry about those. Right. So I have um, some shells. They are uh, kind of a similar configuration to what we had here. And I am, again, I'm just putting it along the edges. I don't need to fill that with glue. All right. This stuff is uh, strong and if you get a heavy body gel, a heavy uh, a glue sort of paste, you don't need to, to completely fill everything. So this one is going a bit of the gel here. Uh, just trying to look at what else I did this one because they're not even if I had is exactly the same kind of shells they're not all going to be the same shape so it's a case of um working out what's going to to work I'm not even too worried like I'm showing you I'm not even too worried about what's showing and what isn't because uh, this will dry transparent and then we've got the top shell here I'm gonna go in there and another welk shell here. Yeah, I'll go with that. That's my little configuration up there, and then um, I have my shells for down here. So, what do we get? I've got one here. And well, I've got similar shells. I did sort of manage to go through my bits and pieces and work out what I had. There, and there, and there. Oh, I'll do that. That looks good to me. So, a little bit of blue gel there. Like I said, I'm not worried if it's getting on to um, here. I can just spread out a little bit more. Add a little bit, make it look all wet. This at the moment it looks white. Okay, and I'll show you the um the finished one in a minute where you can see that it it, it has um all dried completely clear. I did that one yesterday. Um it was it was um yesterday morning and it was clear, dried clear before I went to bed. So it does take a little while, but it is worth waiting for. So We've got that one there. So I'll put a little bit, try and get a bit under there. Just push it into it. There. The thing with mixed media is there is no rules. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you can see little bits here and there. Just make it a feature, make it part of. What you're doing like I'm doing here okay so my last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim off um, the edges there it is there's the lid so bearing in mind this is still quite wet and normally at home I would kind of wait between some of the layers it doesn't mean it's not going to work it doesn't mean it's not going to dry I'm looking for my big scissors there they are I'm literally just going to I'm not too worried that it's hanging off a little bit and I'm not too worried about whether I'm cutting it straight or not it's okay if it hangs off a bit there, there we have it I might just 
this is now the time where I start to faff, or I start to poo things and push things, but I am going to stop because...